10 weird animals only found in Canada. G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Ozzy Tash. I come across this video just looking on YouTube, looking for some videos to react to and learn about Canada. This looks really, really cool. I'm really interested to find out what weird animals are only found in Canada. Look at the animals we have here in Australia. We've got the kangaroo, the koala, the echidna, and the wombat. So let's just get into this video, 10 weird animals only found in Canada. Let's roll. Look how beautiful this looks. When you think of Canada, what do you think of? Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Will I Beavers. Snow. Whatever it is, we're sure that wildlife fits in there somewhere. Oh. There are a lot of creatures that spring to mind when thinking about Canada. Moose. But some are more unique to the area than you'd think. Today, we're looking at 10 animals oh, that you'll no. only find in Canada. <laughs> oh my Let's gosh. Let's jump in. The moose looks so Number beautiful. Number 10. The Vancouver Island Marmot. Oh. The Vancouver Island Marmot is number 10 on our list. So cute. This animal is only found in Canada, more specifically in the high mountains of Vancouver Island, as you might well have so imagined. British Columbia? Compared to most other marmots, the Vancouver Island Marmot is quite large. Adults can weigh up to 7 oh. kg. Their it's main so visual furry. characteristic is their rich brown fur yeah. and the white markings on their nose, chin, forehead, and chest. Oh. Where most so birds cute. migrate, these Nose. do not. They actually hibernate during the long alpine winters when food is not readily available. Okay. Unfortunately, this species is critically endangered, oh. and less than 30 Vancouver Island marmots remain in the 30? wild. 30? What? That's Number horrible. Nine, the Richardson Collared Lemming. Hello. No, we aren't talking You're about cheating. the world-famous computer game Lemmings here. <laughs> but this was game. what those lovely little creatures were based on. The no Richardson way. is collared lemming. Okay. This species of lemming is on the endangered species list, though it's classified oh. as LC, that is, of least concern. What? Sadly, what does that this mean? is something that replicates the game. Global warming and floods have ruined most of their native habitats, which happens to be the tundras in the West Hudson's Bay area Hello. of Canada. They live in gregarious colonies of several dozen lemmings, and their main predators are snowy owls, arctic foxes, and mustelids. Oh. Their young are born in burrows beneath thick vegetation for protection. Unusually, females have up to two litters a year, with anywhere from four to eight pups a litter. Weird, wow. eh? Weird, eh? Number eight. Okay, hold on. Before we get into number eight, how can you be on the endangered species list but to be of least concern? That just doesn't make sense. If you're on the endangered species list, that's it. You're endangered. There shouldn't be a category of which one is the most concerning. That's just silly. That just sounds really, really silly. Um, The Vancouver Mammoth. Oh, my gosh. They just look so cute and cuddly and furry, and I love their nose. I'm not sure how old this video is, but they said there was only 30 in the wild. Do they have them in zoos? Are they trying to, you know, get them back, rebuild them? I hope so, because they looked so cute. Okay, let's get into number eight. The Maritime Shrew. The Maritime Shrew. Number eight is the Maritime Shrew. This small mammal is found in two provinces in Canada, okay. both Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. All right. They live primarily in marshy wetlands, and their habitat is often damaged due to the increasing numbers of flooding in both Nova Scotia oh. and New Brunswick. Yeah, that's in not fact, good, is it? the maritime shrew population is actually decreasing at a fairly rapid pace, so it's quite rare to actually spot one of these. Oh, really? Who's their seen one? Their mainly consists of earthworms, slugs, wood lice, and small anthropods, and they weigh, on average, just between 0 .003 and 0 .007 pounds. Adorable. That's not a lot. They don't weigh much. Number seven. The Ogilvy Mountains Collared Lemming. Another lemming. Yes, number seven is yeah. the second lemming that we're looking at today. Yeah. Except it's the Ogilvy Mountains Collared Lemming this time. They're so cute. This species of lemming can only be found in the Yukon Territory. Oh, wow. Its natural habitat is the tundra, and it's one of a few select mammals solely found in Canada. Their short ears and bushy tail help them to conserve heat in the long, harsh Arctic winters, while also giving them an adorable look, at least Aww, when they're younger. They're so cute. While they are considered an endangered species, they are marked as LC, of least concern, oh, just like the first group of lemmings no. on this list. The front teeth of the Ogilvy Mountains collared lemming so never stop growing. 
they spend their winters hunting for plant matter that has been buried by the snow. Their snow burrows have separate spaces for sleeping, nesting, and defecating. They're like something from Narnia, buried in little houses in the snow. Aww. Oh, okay. Another lemming, another cute lemming on the LC list. Oh my gosh, that LC list just makes me so angry. How can they be on the endangered species list but be of least concern? Let's go with number six, the Ross Goose. This is a white goose, man. Already a white goose with a strapping white sort of tail. Looks really, really interesting. Number six, the Ross's Goose. The, the Ross's, Ross's goose, goose is one that you've no doubt heard in Canada, even if you didn't know that it was anything unusual. This variation of goose has white feathers and black wingtips. That's cool, Canada's man. Canada's northern territories are its native breeding grounds. Okay. In fact, this is the only place that the Ross's goose will breed. Wow. It returns here every year for that purpose. It's so small that explorers didn't even recognize it as a goose until 1861, and its native breeding That's grounds were not located by scientists until 1938. Okay. Surely, its population has greatly increased in the recent decades thanks to right. conservation efforts. That's cool. The Ross's goose occasionally will develop a mutation known as blue, which affects the color of its feathers. Its morph is only rarely documented, but it's beautiful to see. It's very Still, beautiful. even without it, they're a cute addition to this list. Number five. The, Harris the Harris's Sparrow. Sparrow. From one little bird to an even smaller one, so number tiny. five is the Harris's Sparrow. They might be little, but they are, in fact, considered quite large for a sparrow. Look at him sitting up so They're most up often so seen proudly. in Nunavut, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan, and they usually breed in the central part of North Canada. Okay. These birds are known to migrate towards the Great Plains during winter, mm. and they are often confused with the Lapland longspur. Though they may look similar, the Harris's sparrow have a completely unique chirp. They can also be heard making musical chittering, which are primarily delivered from a pretty high perch. Oh, that's cool, man. I like the Number Harris's four, Sparrow. The Perry Caribou. The Perry Caribou. Canada is almost exclusively home to the Perry Caribou. Okay. This subspecies of caribou is endemic to the high Arctic islands of Nuvatnu and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Oh my gosh, how look at them. Both the males and females grow antlers. Oh. The females from June to September and the males from March to August. Different During the times. winter, the peri caribou, both male and female, oh. have a thick, pure white coat of fur. Oh, they are the smallest fur. out of all the subspecies of North American caribou, and oh. on average, female peri caribou only weigh 60 kg, oh. while males weigh 110 kg. With all that space to roam and grow, you mm. might think that they would actually grow to fit their environment, but that certainly didn't end up being the case. I have to say, the peri caribou, the white fur, oh my gosh, they look so beautiful. With the antlers, they fit in with the snow, oh my gosh, who has seen a peri caribou? Oh my gosh, they just look absolutely beautiful. I'm loving this video, I'm so happy I come across this video. Love it, absolutely love it. Number three, the Eskimo Curlew. Eskimo this one curlier. is possibly the most curious on our list. The Eskimo curlew. This unusual bird lives in the tundras of western Arctic Canada. Okay. In the late 1800s, roughly 2 million Eskimo curlews were killed each year for commercial harvest, which, subsequently, decimated their population. Well, that's not good, is Once it? Once abundant, there have now been no reliable sightings of this bird since 1987. What? Though the occasional birder still claims to see one. They feed mostly on berries and insects and weigh approximately only 360 g. It's unknown whether this bird has actually gone extinct or only remains as critically endangered. And there's much debate on the matter within both the birding community and the scientific community. One thing's for sure, however, these birds are definitely elusive. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the Eskimo curlew, you don't even know if it exists anymore. It could be extinct. You don't know. They said there hasn't been a sighting since, what, 1980s or something? Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. How can scientists and environmentalists and conservationists not know? Oh, my gosh. How big was this bird? They haven't had anybody out there looking to see 
if they're still alive or if they're not extinct. Oh my gosh, that seems a little bit strange, doesn't it? It really seems strange. Um, what is this thing? Oh my gosh. Number two, the Vancouver lamprey. It's almost as classic as the moose or maple syrup. It's the Vancouver lamprey. This subspecies wow. of lamprey is only found in just two lakes, Lake Cowichan and Massachusetts Lake, both located Ooh. in Vancouver Island, Canada. It's <laughs> often known as the Cowichan lamprey. They range in length from 11 centimeters to 27 centimeters, uh, no. and their eyes are actually on top of their head. Oh, it's wow. a hematophagous predator, meaning that it latches onto fish species and feeds off of them. Oh. Their most common prey are the cutthroat trout, the coho salmon, and are one of the leading predators of salmonids. Oh, wow. Before we continue, why don't you share this video with your friends? It looks a little I'm bit sure scary, they really that one. Appreciate it. <laughs> Number one, one, the Canadian Arctic Marble Fox. Oh, how beautiful are you? Number one is the Canadian <laughs> Arctic Marble Fox. Oh. This species of fox is considered to be one of the rarest of fox species. Hello. And it is utterly beautiful. It is. How beautiful They occur beautiful from genetic you? mutations and gain their name from the marble ice? appearance of their fur. Different primarily colors? white with either gray, black, or red swirled through it. Wow. There is a high movement to try and domesticate them, but it is highly discouraged and sometimes even illegal to own the Canadian Arctic marble fox. It should fox be illegal. Pet. They're they live so for three beautiful. to four years in the wild and are well it? adapted to the frigid Arctic winters. They're playful, plentiful, and not for petting. They are, however, definitely the winner of the top spot because oh. of their elegant look and huge wow. popularity. We think you'd be barking mad not to love them. Oh my gosh, guys. The Canadian Arctic fox look absolutely beautiful. Man, you can see husky looking features in that in that fox, can't you? I'm looking at my husky just going, oh my gosh, you look like a Canadian Arctic fox just with your facial features. Oh my gosh, that video was so fun. There were so many beautiful animals there that are only in Canada. There were some sad stories, but they're not quite too sure if one of those, that Eskimo Curlo, if that bird is still even around, like if, it, if it's extinct, they're not quite too sure. And they had a couple of animals that are on that little concern endangered species list or something. I don't like that reference at all. If you're on the endangered species list, that's it. It's a concern. It shouldn't be, you know, a level of concern. It's a concern straight away. Oh my gosh, guys, I really, really enjoyed that video. It made me feel all nice and warm on the inside. If you liked it, please jump on, smash the like button, leave a comment, and of course, remember to subscribe. That really helps me out. Also, share your stories of any of these animals. I'd love to hear them. Cheers and under. Take care. Bye.